Hi guys, I'm sitting on the floor doing some electrical work and I just got to make this video. Step one, uh, thing one, I will never, ever, ever outperform a tradesman at his own trade uh, for a couple reasons. And when it comes to robotics, I will never, ever create a robot that's designed to replace a tradesman at his own trade, even though our robots are gonna do all sorts of things like construction or measurement or uh, support in hazardous environments. It, 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 it's not because I, I'm trying to avoid uh, this job replacement. It's because, <laughs> it's because it's not the most optimal thing to do. And it doesn't help uh, if you were to do that. Like these these iRobot style walking robots that are, no, let's get into it. I just wanna share a little bit of stuff. So I'm an engineer and I'm not an electrician. An engineer can't outperform at a, an electrician at being an electrician. There are times when I'll bring a technology into a certain situation because I found an enhancement or I found something that benefits me from the prior way I was doing something. And I may have a really, really nice tip. It could be optimal for a particular situation or one little action in a whole job to be done, but it won't address the whole job. It won't address all of the circumstances which the electrician who does this as a career is aware of. So I could be working with something that was installed a few years back in it, and it was installed with the latest components from this decade. And the electrician knows, well, that's not going to work for 80% of homes that are built 30 years ago, etc. cetera. And uh, I, I wish we could take it easy on the, the criticism comments because I never have the intention to say, oh, I've outsmarted the, the current method or the way that you guys are doing something. It usually, uh, it may or may not replace one little action, but even if it does, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, accommodate the full reality of things people work with. And I, so I think a lot of the, the comments that are kind of nasty, there um, there's an underlying feeling that Oh, well, this bozo is like tampering. He, he's treading in my territory and he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's true. I don't know your job and I, I never will. Um, the fact that I'm making these videos at all means that I have time to sit here behind the camera when, and, and that time is not spent building or working or, or you know, paying the bills. And so I'll never ever catch up to the amount of experience that like a proper tradesman has. So often I'm just fooling around with newfangled components, new materials, or uh, trying things differently than the way they're typically done. And it's not likely to result in a way that's better for the whole picture. Um, in fact, it's, it's very likely that one improvement that I discover will be a disadvantage against uh, standards that must be followed or protocols or uh, safety guidelines and and anything outside of so mass produced products and, and mass uh, actionable processes so the things that are done the ordinary way in any given trade um, those are following a whole bunch of rules that I may or may not be aware of um, for sure several that I'm not. And um, within that bonus uh, uh, newfangled concept, there's something true for sure that I'm sharing. I discovered a property of a material or a, um, a one effective phenomenon that you can see in, in play. And um, so I'm addressing young people that are um, young people or newcomers to a space that are interested in building their own things, they're in interested in DIY, and they're interested, uh, et cetera. But if that viewer, if you have a neighbor who's blue collar worker in that trade, his advice overrides all of mine. His advice is he's the one that you go to and you say, hey, this dude on YouTube shared this tip is it worth anything? 
and then that's he's still the expert it doesn't matter how many engineering degrees i have um so there's no there's no true disruption uh that there's caveats in the engineering space and in the uh, 3d printing space and the stuff that's new and hasn't developed a lot of standards there could be disruption i i have loads of ideas in that space and and those are the types of videos that don't get a lot of uh the disgruntled feedback so you, you'll notice um when i show a content item about drilling holes or it'll span all these different materials but for a given material there's someone who's an expert with a lot of practice and experience and they they know it better than me every time when these impact drivers came out um they could take a process and make it four times faster. And so they get adopted by tradespeople. And this is what robotics should look like. You have a tool and it may have autonomy, but it doesn't replace the person. In, in this case, the tool doesn't do anything that the human doesn't want it to do. And the tool is only used on the day and in the moment when that, uh, that tool is beneficial. And so the person didn't throw away their screwdriver the experts didn't throw away their screwdrivers when these came out. Now they have both. And for a number of circumstances, this is going to make the person five times faster. Does that mean four people lose their jobs? No, because um, so in, in, a, in an ugly space of economics uh, with a, a short businesses that have a short term vision in their leadership, that could happen. A few people lose their jobs. But in the, the grand scheme, the tools are always, and a robot is a tool, it is always intended to just enhance our productivity in the stuff that we want to do. It doesn't matter if it's a robot or a drill, it can't decide what needs to be done. It can only do. So that's how I, lo that's how I look at the automation, innovation, etc. Just as a side note, this video is a little bit long drawn out. Um, there's loads more thoughts that I wish I could share, and I'm sure it, it's uh, somewhat boring for the level of a YouTube video. And I'm thinking of making a podcast where I just discuss a bunch of stuff at length that, that goes and dives a lot deeper than the videos. Because admittedly, podcasts, you throw it in your ear, and, and for the 5% of people or less, who want to hear all of that, uh, the thought processes or experiences and stories, um, maybe that's worthwhile. So that's, uh, that's been simmering on my mind. Um, and then we have, uh, what was it? All right, it's crossing disciplines. It's nature and biology, and it's the stuff that, I love it. It's, uh, I'm drawn to this stuff. It's part of my character, my hobbies, and, and it's something where, Engineers can only go so far before they just start wrecking things. And this happens at the small scale, one individual, and it happens at the broad scale, like entire nations driving the planet into a, into a wreck. And so I can see plenty of spaces where technology or engineering uh, actions can enhance the effort. But for every enhancement, it's really like saying, well, we can crank up the power we can do more of whatever we're doing. That doesn't mean we're sure that we should do more of what we're doing. I mean, gosh, those dogs. In every instance where I'm sharing some idea that touches into biology or health or um, uh, things that are living, I'm coming from a place where, like, I've spent at least half a decade with full, like, state-of-the-art experts in agriculture, in bovine reproduction, and in microbiology, like really, and I'm constantly learning from them. It's thrilling to be around those people. And so I have like some basic concepts stored and, and I can see where, when I talk with them, I can see where engineers and inventors have already crossed a line into damage. And so I'm coming from a place where I know automatically if i have some idea or advice that must be filtered through the part of the economy the um the expertise that is allocated to filtering those things 
we don't decide to make a robot that's going to uh, pour poison on anthills. We bring this possibility to the team who's in charge. So that could be a committee, that could be a, a, a state entity, or it could be a technology entity. And those people get to decide. Well, one, one major project from about five years back was a Zika one. We were measuring the habitats um, under the pipelines, uh, sorry, under the semi-enclosed sewers where the mosquitoes are laying eggs and reproducing. And the technology, made huge leap in the ability to figure out what the population is doing, but we can't advise our own project on that ever. Um, so with agriculture and um, ecology, like it should be like a gift. The engineer should be passing these options, these possibilities to potentially enhance a method. And if it's a student project, sure, build a prototype, play around, kill a few ants, but it is never intended to uh, go from there to change the world. It's intended to do it collaboratively. Um, I work at the a and campus where we have loads and loads of experts in the, in directly in the field of like biology and supervised by the entities and the funding agencies and the, the governmental oversight that is necessary and then the best that we know how to do so um, to me any any project that crosses those fields i'm imagining these experts right there next to us we don't do any implementation without a partnership also so uh never imagine that oh this is a way to get rich quick this is a way to uh just go and do we don't do we plan we try things out we get some results and we, we pull it together to the, pull together the data that says, okay, this was possible with these limitations and these barriers, what do we need to measure next? And the next step would always be, what do we need to ask next, measure next, and who do we need to collaborate with? Okay, so that's tradespeople that I will likely irritate and biology, ecology people that I will likely irritate and then the last one would be policy people or energy people. When, when we talk about efficiency and um, energy changes, oh, electric cars or solar panels and stuff, I'm fascinated by all that too. You'll start to notice that physics and engineering, that it just, it goes wherever we do things as humans. Um, so those energy decisions, uh, I will be sharing loads of stuff about how to, charge your phone differently or do it remotely or um, or build out uh, solar based charging setups. And that, again, we're not the decision makers. We're going to discover things and try stuff out. Um, and then at scale, it really depends on the geography, it depends on the culture. And um, in some countries, it, it's not valid. In some zones, it's not valid. And in some, it, everything, nothing is black and white. And I hope everybody can see that and, and see a little bit of my intentions. We're, uh, I'm not a, an authority on anything except for discovery. And I'm so thankful to have those people, even though sometimes they're getting disgruntled. I'm so thankful to have them. Like my audience grew a huge amount in a short time that I, I wasn't expecting. and. And when those disgruntled people show up and make comments on the videos, it's awesome because there's like a few thousand brains coming in and giving checks and balances to the concepts. And so I, I want to engage those people and then just let them know we're on the same team. And so thank you for your comments. Please keep the tone nice um, and please understand I'm here to learn from you 100% as much as I want to share knowledge. Thanks everyone.